You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. On today's episode of the podcast, we preview the test series between England and New Zealand. It's the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast, and let's get started. Let's have a look at the fixture for this test series between England and New Zealand. The first test match at Lords on June the 2nd, and the second test match at Edge Bastion on June the 10th. Let's have a look at the England and New Zealand test squads. We'll start with England. Joe Root, James Anderson, James Bracey, Stuart Broad, Rory Burns, Zach Crawley, Ben Ferks, Dan Lawrence, Jack Leach, Craig Overton, Ollie Pope, Ollie Robinson, Dom Sibley, Ollie Stone, and Mark Wood. Let's have a look at New Zealand's test squad. Kane Williamson, Tom Blundell, Trent Bolt, Doug Bracewell, Devin Conway, Colin DeGranholm, Jacob Duffy, Matt Henry, Kyle Jamison, Tom Latham, Daryl Mitchell, Henry Nichols, Asjaz Patel, Ratchan Ravinda, Mitchell Satner, Tim Southie, Ross Taylor, Neil Wagner, BJ Watling, and Will Young. Let's talk about the England Test Squad. They've got a couple of new faces in this Test Squad. England, James Bracey from Gloucestershire and Ollie Robinson from Sussex coming into the squad. As England are trying new players ahead of the Ashes, of course, um, as you do, trying new players to see how they will fit into the side. And that's what England are doing with Bracey and Robinson. Obviously seeing a lot of potential in those two players. They've had pretty good county cricket uh, form this season in the county championship. Bracey scoring over 479 runs, averaging 47. Robinson taking 29 wickets with two five-wicket hauls and a 10-wicket haul. So they're both in good form and do have the potential to do well at test level. But the challenge for them is to transfer that good form from county cricket into test cricket if given the chance to make their debuts in this series against New Zealand. All well and good scoring runs and taking wickets at county level, but that's county cricket. You need to do it at test level. It's a big step up, and it's often very hard to transfer that form from county cricket to test cricket because of that big step. So Bracey and Robinson will certainly have to do that if given the chance in this England and New Zealand test series. The other talking point from England squad is the, the resting of Moen Ali, Johnny Bairstro, Josh Butler, Sam Curran, Chris Wokes have been rested due to the IPL. We sort of expected that some of the England players may be rested because of the IPL, and we sort of expected that anyway. If the IPL was still going on, we sort of expected that some of the England players were going to miss out this test series against New Zealand. Since the IPL has now been postponed, those players have been rested, so they won't be taking part in this series. So that's a big blow for England. Missing, missing out those players with a lot of experience does really hamper their um, side in this series against New Zealand. They've also got some injury concerns with Ben Stokes and Joffre Archer. Ben Stokes with that injured index finger that he picked up in the IPL. His return to cricket will be for Durham in next month's T20 Blast as he recovers from that injury. The other concern is Joffre Archer in terms of his elbow injury. It's been plaguing him for some time. He went to saw, sorry, he went to see a consultant about his elbow, and he advised Archer that surgery was required for his elbow. The ECB are unsure about his recovery time. It may take up to two or to three months, but they're unsure about when he will return to cricket. I don't think he'll play the India Test Series. He could be in doubt for the T20 World Cup and maybe for the Ashes drop for Archer. So that's a real concern for England going forward. It's going to be a big blow for England, absolutely. Um, missing out uh, with Joffre Archer because he's such a, a very good player, as we all know. Very fine, fast bowler, but this elbow injury has given him some trouble for some time. And obviously, as we remember with Archer, he was ruled out of the IPL due to having a piece of glass in his hand. He had surgery to remove it after a freak accident with his fish tank. So a lot of bad luck for Joffre Archer. But as we said before, his elbow injury is a real concern. And what happens if his elbow injury flares up again? And Joffre Archer will have to ask himself this question. 
can I continue playing test matches if I still have this problem with the elbow? Now, hopefully the surgery that he will have will definitely make sure the elbow's um, doing well, uh, making sure it won't flare up again. But if it does flare up again, it, will he consider retiring from test cricket, just playing ODIs or T20s? Is Archer's body up to the rigours of test cricket? Uh, Joe Root's management of Jofra Archer in, in test matches hasn't been great. He's been using him in long spells instead of short, sharp spells, and Jofra Archer's getting tired, more risk of getting injured, as we've seen with his elbow injury. So Jofra Archer will have to make a big decision if it happens again, this elbow injury flares up. Does he continue to play test matches or just focus on ODIs or T20s? We often see that with fast bowlers, that they often make that choice in their career. Be very interesting to see to see that. Obviously, you don't want to see that uh, when someone's injured, like a quality player like Archer, to make that decision. But he's got to think about his long-term career as well. So by him getting surgery on this elbow, hopefully this will resolve this injury and hopefully he can be back on the park for England in the near future. Hopefully for the T20 World Cup and hopefully for the Ashes. Another talking point about England's squad is Chris Silverwood, the coach of England. His expectations for this England squad, he's made it pretty clear that England are focusing on the Ashes. He said uh, recently, we want to travel to Australia fitter, faster and leaner, more ready than ever before for the Ashes in Australia. So clear intentions there from Chris Silverwood that England are definitely focusing on the Ashes later on this year. He went on to say, we have the greatest respect for our opponents, New Zealand and India. To get to where we want to be against Australia, we have to perform well in these test matches against New Zealand and India. He then went on to say, it's not that we rate Australia more than anyone else. We understand that we have two of the best teams in the world in front of us. Play well against them. Play well to our abilities. It will help us win the Ashes as well. So clearly, England have a focus on the Ashes and also the T20 World Cup as well later on this year. So those are the two big important series for for England later on this year, winning the Ashes in Australia and hopefully winning the T20 World Cup. What I'll say about that is it's very important for England to to focus on this series against New Zealand because if you start thinking about the Ashes and the T20 World Cup, that's not until the end of the year. Stay in the present moment, try and think about winning this Test Series against New Zealand and winning the Test Series against India because these two teams are very two quality sides, both of them in the World Test Championship final, they're important for England. If they want to play their best cricket and start developing a squad and start building consistency with their team to hopefully take to Australia to win the Ashes, they've got to play well in in this series against New Zealand and they've got to play well against India as well to do that. It's very important that they don't get too far ahead of themselves. They always do this in an Ashes year in England. They always think too far ahead when it's an Ashes year. They're always thinking about the Ashes. Think about the now. The Ashes aren't until the end of the year. So it's very important for England to keep their focus on this series against New Zealand and for the series against India to follow. With Chris Silverwood indicating that England are focusing on the Ashes, the one issue England have had on the last two Ashes tours to Australia is their batting. England's batting for this series against New Zealand will be crucial for their chances of winning the series against New Zealand and the Test Series against India and potentially the Ashes. Just want to touch on England's batting a bit and have a look at their batsmen that they've selected for this uh, Test Series against New Zealand. England's batting, as we've known for a while, it's been a concern for them for a a while now. It's it's important for England that their senior batsmen that they've selected in this uh, Test Series against New Zealand, the likes of Pope, Lawrence, Crawley, Burns, Sibley and Folks, they've got to transfer their county form into Test Cricket because all of them have had pretty good county cricket form this county championship. Uh, Pope and Burns are averaging 61. Lawrence, 55. James Bracey, who's come into the squad as a new face, he's averaging 47. Crawley, 33. Folks, 37. All of them have scored over 350 runs or more. So they are coming into this series against New Zealand in good touch. But the challenge for them is to transfer that form into the Test Arena because they've got to support Joe Root. Without Stokes, Butler, 
Ali, Wokes, and Sam Curran. Those runs from those players do add a lot to this England batting lineup. You take them out because they've been rested. You bring in Byrne, Sibley, Pope, Crawley, Folks, and Lawrence. Their test record is not as good as Stokes, Butler, Ali, Wokes, and Sam Curran. There's a lot of experience there with those players I just named before. When you take them out, it does leave a big hole for England in terms of their batting. And that's where Byrne, Sibley, Pope, Crawley, and Folks and Lawrence really have to step up and support Joe Root. Because Joe Root's the only experienced batsman in this England team. The rest of them have played a lot of test matches, but their records in test cricket are not great. Um, they're all averaging 30. Sibley's averaging 30. Burns averaging 30. Same with Pope, Crawley, and Folks. The only one who isn't averaging 30 is Dan Lawrence. So they really need to improve their averages, um, these batsmen going forward for England. Because these batsmen could be the batsmen that England take to the Ashes. And they're, as we said before, their problem is that they haven't scored enough runs in Australia. In this series against New Zealand, up against the quality New Zealand bowling attack, they are going to struggle if they don't score runs. Joe Root can't do it by himself. He needs them to support them. So I think for England, their main focus in this series is that all their batsmen that I've just named need to step up and start scoring runs on a consistent basis. Because if they do that, they're in with a good chance of winning this series against New Zealand. And hopefully for them, win the Ashes in Australia later on this year. But going back to what I said before, you take out Stokes, Butler and Ali, plus Wokes and Sam Curran, those runs do add a lot to England's batting. You take them out, it looks a bit thin. So those batsmen, Burns, Sibley, Perp, Crawley, Folks, and Lawrence, really need to stand up, take ownership, score runs on a consistent basis, and help Joe Root out. Because if they don't, then it's going to be a tough series for, for England against uh, New Zealand in this test series. Overall, I think this England squad's a bit undermanned because they're missing key players due to rest and injuries. England do have experienced players in Root, Anderson and Broad, but it needs to be a big team effort to beat New Zealand in this test series. And it's going to be a challenge for this undermanned England team to beat this New Zealand team. And for England, it's very important for them that they try and play their best cricket in this series against New Zealand. New Zealand are a very good opponent. They're one of the best in the world, obviously, playing in the World Test Championship final against India. And for, for England, this is a big test for them. Are they up to it? That's the question I pose to England. Are they up to the challenge? Can they beat this New Zealand side? Remains to be seen because I think their squad's a bit undermanned. And compared to New Zealand's squad, it's a lot stronger. So England have their work cut out for them to try and win this series against New Zealand. But for them, it's just about trying to play their best cricket, and you never know. They may win the series, but if they don't, they've got to take a lot of learnings out of that if they don't win the series. If they do win the series, that's great for their confidence going into the India series and then potentially the Ashes after that. But for this undermanned England side, they need to play their best cricket to beat this New Zealand side. It's going to take a team effort to do that, are they up to the challenge? That's what I'll say to England. That's the question I say to them. Are they up to this challenge? Can they beat this New Zealand side? Let's talk about the New Zealand test squad that they've selected for this test series against England. To me, New Zealand have selected a strong squad. Some quality players in this squad. Lots of match winners and lots of test match cricket experience in this New Zealand squad. Compared to England's squad, it's much stronger and experienced. Some new faces in this New Zealand squad. Devin Conway, Ratchan, Ravinder, Will Young, and Jacob Duffy. These could be the next generation of test players for New Zealand in years to come. Some old faces have returned to this New Zealand test squad. Doug Bracewell returns after a long hiatus from test cricket, returns to the test squad for New Zealand. And this series against England for New Zealand is great preparation in terms of the World Test Championship final, which will be played at Southampton against India and New Zealand. So this is great preparation for New Zealand ahead of that World Test Championship final. The one question mark that New Zealand do have in this Test Series against England is Trent Bolt's availability to play in the series. 
Now, he was still in New Zealand when the squad flew out to England. He visited some family in New Zealand. He could miss out both test matches against England, but New Zealand have confirmed that he will be available for the World Test Championship final against India. So he may miss out these two test matches against England, but New Zealand have confirmed he will be available for selection for the World Test Championship final against India. So we'll wait and see on that front if Trent Bolt can play in this series. If not, we may see him in the World Test Championship final. I think New Zealand will be feeling pretty confident of a series win against England if they can win the series. It will be their first Test Series victory in England since 1999. So this New Zealand side are in a good position to win their first Test Series in England since 1999. They've got a very good squad and they're going to be very hard to beat in this Test Series for England. So England will have to be on their game to beat this quality New Zealand side. Let's have a look at England and New Zealand's stats between the two countries in Test Matches. Head-to-head in test matches overall, England 48, New Zealand 11. Head-to-head in test matches overall in England, England 30, New Zealand 5. Leading run scorer, Graham Gooch with 987. Leading wicket-taker, Richard Hadley with 70. Most dismissals, Adam Poore with 26. Most catches, Stephen Fleming with 15. Most matches, Richard Hadley with 14. And the first test match that these two countries played in was back in 19... 19- 30. Let's preview the first test match of the series between England and New Zealand from Lords. Talk about the potential 11s for both teams and who's going to win this first test match of the series. Head to head record at Lords for both teams. Their first test match played here was back in 1931. They've played 17 matches for eight draws. England have won eight games. New Zealand have just won the one game. Let's have a look at both teams' potential 11s for the first test match. We'll start with England's potential 11. Bracey, Sibley, Burns, Crawley, Root, Lawrence, Pope, Folks, Broad, Leach, Stone and Anderson. That could be England's potential 11 for the first test match of the series. Bracey to potentially make his debut and open with Burns. Depends if Dom Sibley has recovered from that finger injury. If he hasn't recovered from that finger injury, then James Bracey to come in to make his debut. If he has recovered from that finger injury, Dom Sibley, then he opens with Rory Burns. Let's have a look at New Zealand's potential 11 for the first test match. Latham, Blundell, Williamson, Taylor or Young, Nichols, Watling, Mitchell, Jamison, Southie, Wagner and Henry. That could be New Zealand's potential 11 for the first test match. Ross Taylor's in a bit of doubt with that hamstring injury. If he isn't available to play this first test match, I think Will Young may come into the side to make his debut for New Zealand. Will Young has been playing county cricket for Durham, and he has some sort of cricket under his belt, which will put him in good stead if he gets the call up for New Zealand. So both teams may go into the first test match with those potential 11s. Who's going to win this first test match at Lords? I think New Zealand are going to win the first test match at Lords. New Zealand's record at Lords isn't the best record, just winning the one game, but I think they can add to that one win in this first test match of the series. What are my thoughts on this series? This series is very important for both teams. It's important for England in the lead-up to the Ashes later on this year, trying out players they think can be on that Ashes squad and hopefully for them to retain the Ashes on Australian soil for the first time since 2010-11. Also making sure that they build a team that can not only beat New Zealand and India this English summer, but Australia as well for the Ashes. Also an opportunity for other players to make their case to be a part of that Ashes squad. This series is also important for New Zealand. Great preparation for them in terms of the World Test Championship final against India. These two Test matches, they'll be looking at what team and combinations they would take into that World Test Championship final against India. Also looking at areas they can improve on during this Test series against England and hopefully win the series overall and hopefully that will put them in good stead for the World Chess Championship final. Who's going to be the leading run scorer and leading wicket taker for both teams? We'll start with England. I think Joe Root's going to be the leading wicket ta- uh, leading run scorer, I should say. And James Anderson's going to be the leading wicket taker. For New Zealand, Kane Williamson will be the leading run scorer and Tim Southie will be the leading wicket taker. The man of the series, I think Kane Williamson may be the man of the series. 
Who's going to win this series overall? I think New Zealand may win their first Test Series in England for the first time since 1999. In that 1999 Test Series, they won that Series 2-1 out of the best of four Test matches. To me, New Zealand's squad is stronger compared to England's squad. I think New Zealand to win the series either 2-0 or 1-0. But let's hope we get a good contest of these two Test matches between England and New Zealand. And let's hope we see some good competitive Test match cricket. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get the latest episodes of the podcast. And like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.